Well, good afternoon. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Ruth Bottomley. Um, I'm the Senior Programme Manager for our Research Development Support area of work. Um, I'm realising that I'm actually really new to INAS compared to some of you. I've just talked to Carol, who's told me you know, that INAS was set up in 1988. And I was going to talk about us having a 25th anniversary next year, but in fact, it's not really our 25th anniversary. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to talk a bit today about just improving the visibility and accessibility of Southern research. Um, I, I'll sort of recap a little bit on, on who we are and what we do, um, because I think even for some of you who've known us for quite a long time, that maybe we've um, developed and grown. Um, our vision is to have research at the heart of development, and um, the mission is to support the production, sharing and use of developing country research. Um, we have just released a new strategy. There was a few copies at the back if you want to pick them up, but they're also available um, on our website. Um, so most of what I'm going to talk about today is linked to this kind of approach that we have. Um, so everyone's really familiar with this. Um, we believe uh, that research and knowledge have a really crucial role uh, to play in addressing global development challenges um, and contributing to, to goals like the Sustainable Development Goals. But we particularly believe that local research, the so research produced in developing and transitional countries, also plays an extremely important role, particularly in terms of solving local development challenges. And so it's really kind of part of our mission and efforts to make sure that every researcher has an opportunity to contribute in some way to that global development conversation. However, as we know, there are many significant challenges for um, researchers and uh, institutions within developing countries, and I'm sure um, you're all familiar with, with many of them, sort of the infrastructure problems, poor equipment, um, skills gaps, all those sorts of things. I think, you know, we're also addressing in some ways um, a balance um, we've talked about globalisation and um, sort of universality, but there is still a divide. Um, there, you know, much of the funding for research comes from the North, research agendas are set in the North, um, as are the standards and processes for publishing. And so it can be really challenging for researchers in the South or in developing countries to access funding to keep up with sort of these rapidly changing uh, research and publishing environment and to meet the standards um, that are expected. So we're interested in making the research system fairer, sort of levelling the playing field so that it works better for people in these countries um, and also so that we can help them to make their research more visible and accessible. So that's really I'm going to talk about two bits today of our work. Um, what we do, I mean, I think many of you know the work we do in terms of libraries and access to e-resources and supporting library consortia to negotiate um, with publishers for uh, discounted e-resources. But this is actually the sort of whole system that we work across. Um, we try to work with as many different actors in the system and to kind of link and collaborate and bring them together. Um, very much based on this idea that if we just work sort of in silos or with, with individual actors or institutions, that things get stuck there and, and don't necessarily get out. Um, so we work on the e-resources, we work with researchers, research institutes, we work with local publishers, um, civil society. We also have an evidence-informed policy-making part where we work with researchers um, in policy departments and we work with media. So I'm going to talk about our areas of work around the publishing, so the journals, and also um, in terms of our author aid work today. So I mean, universities everywhere, I think across the world, emphasise the importance of being published in high quality academic journals as a path for promotion, but also as a way to, to get the research um, out there and, and accessed. Um, but it's usually interpreted as being published in um, international journals with impact factors. Um, 
but also, you know, in many developing countries there are um, journals and a thriving publishing sector. Um, it's true that local journals are of varying quality, but there is a keen desire often to improve this quality. It's very difficult for journals um, in the South to receive an impact factor, um, and so they're often assumed to be of lower quality, um, sometimes even to be seen as, as predatory journals. Um, so what we're doing to try and address this situation is to support um, local journals in, in several countries. Um, so we support online journal platforms, which we call JOLs, um, and we're currently supporting them in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Mongolia, and Central America. Um, and there, we're supporting local institutions, such as national science institutions, to run these journal platforms. Um, we also, um, I think back in 98, we set up the African Journals Online. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with this, um, but that's now managed um, sort of locally in, in South Africa. There's over 350 journals on our Asian platforms and over 500 journals on um, African Joel. And they're, they're hosted on open journal software, OJS, um, and they're open access. Um, the Asian journals are open access in that they're free to read. Um, and I think about half of the, the age-old journals are open access. So these platforms allow higher visibility um, than if you know, the journals were on, online alone. They're Google searchable. We also have um, an aggregator platform called Asia Joel, where you can actually search across all of the Joel platforms. This is an example of our Sri Lanka journals online platform. Um, it's, you know, uh, it's got the featured journals, it's got latest news, it also has kind of a um, sort of latest uh, activities coming up as a, as a regular stream. Um, we're currently working with a publisher called Ubiquity Press um, who are hosting these platforms um, and who have a you know, real strong desire as well to promote uh, southern publishing. Um, and so as we gradually hand over this work to these local institutions, they are beginning to pay the hosting fees directly to Ubiquity. Um, so as I mentioned, not all journals are of excellent quality, but there are many high quality ones and many that are keen to improve their publishing practices and standards. So one of the things that we've been doing is to work to improve journal quality with the publishers and the editors. Um, so we've been providing for quite a few years now um, sort of mentoring and face-to-face -face training. Um, we're currently developing an online course on journal quality, um, which we believe will really help with cost-effective and ongoing training for journal editors who um, you know, tend to be uh, not in the jobs for a long time. So there's a need for a sort of regular um, training to happen. We also have communities of practice for both editors and the journal managers so that they can share learning and experience. But one of the things that we're developing at the moment with the um, AJOL is the journal publishing practices and standards. And this is basically um, a set of uh, transparent uh, and clearly defined categories based on existing sets of best practice, for example, from impact factor inclusion criteria, Scopus criteria, um, DOAJ. So we've, we've brought those together into um, sort of these publishing practice standards. And what will happen is that each journal on these job platforms will be assessed and then awarded a ranking, as, as shown here which will give people a better idea of the quality, but it will also motivate uh, journal editors to constantly improve the quality of their own journals. Um, one of the other things we're doing with the journals is really um, supporting the institutions, so the, the editors, but also the, the national institutions that are running the job platforms to promote them locally and internationally. Um, so we're, we're developing institutional communication strategies um, and we're trialling media engagement um, to uh, uh, write press releases about research that is published in these journals. Um, and this has been distributed through the Alpha Galileo press release service. Um, so 
creating quite a, a wide reach for these articles. Um, so we're always really interested if others, you know, if you have other ideas about how you can better promote and publicise this research, um, I'd be really happy to hear them. Um, so closely linked to this um, work with our academic journals is the support that we provide to researchers um, in developing countries to publish their work. And then obviously being able to communicate research findings in a sort of clear and scientifically robust uh, way is really essential um, for this research to get read. Usually as well it has to be in English. So AuthorAid is one of the flagship projects that we've been running for um, nearly 10 years with the intention specifically to help early career researchers write up and publish their research. This is what the platform looks like. Um, if you look at this uh, bar here, you'll see some of the things that are offered by the platform. Um, so we have a library of resources, we have a discussion forum that's, that's hosted by dgroups. Um, we have um, training, um, so we offer online courses and research writing. We offer travel grants um, and we also offer workshop grants um, for people to run their own workshops on research writing. So we have around 13,000 researchers signed up to this network at the moment. And I think you know, one of the, the key advantages is often, again, researchers in some of these countries work very much in isolation. So this platform really helps to bring people together and allows them to learn and to share ideas and to collaborate with each other. Um, as well as having the platform, we also work with institutions to actually embed research writing training uh, within their institutions. Um, we're currently working with partners in Sri Lanka, Ghana, Tanzania and Vietnam. Um, and I won't go into too much detail about it because um, it's often face-to-face -face training, mentoring support that these, these institutions provide. However, as we ourselves are increasingly moving to online courses, um, at INASP we're uh, running twice yearly uh, open online courses. I wouldn't quite call them massive, but open <laughs> online courses on research writing, um, where we're able to attract Last one we had, I think, there was around 1,500 participants from all of these different countries um, in the world. Um, and we, we find that these online courses are pretty successful in terms of you know, allowing for greater flexibility for the learners. Um, and uh, another important aspect is that for women researchers who often have many other commitments, um, these online courses allow greater flexibility. Um, in terms of when they can study and, and balance their other responsibilities. So as we were running these courses, we invite some of our embedding partner uh, representatives to be guest facilitators so that they gain knowledge of how to facilitate an online course, which is very different, of course, from a face-to-face um, -face course. And as a result of that, we've had more and more interest from the partners to actually run their own online courses. Um, so this is something that we've also been supporting and um, just really starting out with and it's very much a sort of adaptive process at the moment and um, it's challenging obviously because many of the institutions that we work with have a very low level of technical ability poorly maintained old computers pirated versions of software and um, you know poor web and navigation skills um, and Often they don't have adequate IT support either um, to, to uh, run the mule and, and to administer that. So by way of solution, we, we first of all held a training in, in Tanzania with a, a bunch of partners and just came across all these problems that people were at different levels, they had different IT capacities. Um, so we've moved to a slightly different approach now where we're helping institutions run on Moodle Cloud. Um, which basically removes worry about hosting and back-end maintenance. For less than 50 participants, it's free. Um, so for most of our you know, partner institutions, that's perfect. Um, and it's, it's just very easy to access and run. So we're now sort of training um, individual institutions, doing some sort of very bespoke training where we have about a three-week lead-up period of doing work online to get them used to sort of navigating 
um, on the Moodle platform and looking at previous research writing courses, facilitators, inputs, all those sorts of things. And then this is followed up with a three-day uh, face-to-face intensive where they really then begin to roll out the course. So we're just doing this now with the University um, of Colombo, the medical faculty there. Um, and so they will be beginning to run their own online course um, later this month. Um, just as a, I've mentioned briefly about sort of some of the gender issues, I think that we're also aware that there are many gendered issues in, in sort of this research and knowledge sector. Um, there is a digital divide as well that's, that's influenced by gender. I think that there are, um, you know, while we find online courses are flexible and suitable for women, um, they often have less access to, to digital technology. Um, we're doing more and more work to really look at how we can better support women within the research system so that we, you know, there are more senior uh, role models uh, to support other women. Um, this is pictures from the University of Dodoma where they, they ran a, a workshop called Getting Out of the Box and it was basically a, a gender sensitization workshop to address uh, some of the gender <coughs> issues within their institution. Um, so I suppose just in terms, you know, of some of the broader challenges that affect both our publishing and our author aid work is, is that, you know, the publishing environment is complex but it's also changing rapidly. And so it's really difficult for the researchers and institutions that we work with to keep up to date with the developments. Um, so we encourage our partners to participate as much as possible in international initiatives, workshops, and we also partner with um, different organisations and, and industry bodies who can um, provide support and assistance. So this is just an example. Um, along with several other um, publishing bodies, we're a member of the Think, Check, Submit campaign, which aims to educate and guide researchers about how to carefully select a journal for publishing. Um, we also have uh, started a partnership with Kudos, which helps to maximize the visibility of research. Um, uh, it provides uh, layman's uh, summaries of research and so helps it to reach a wider audience. Um, we're also uh, trialing at the moment the use of the Crossref Authenticate Plagiarism uh, software with our journals to try to find out to what extent um, articles are plagiarized so that we can better um, address some of those issues as well. And um, I think ORCID was mentioned earlier, so we also encourage um, many of our researchers to sign up to get their own ORCID ID. Um, so sorry, I feel it's been a bit of a whistle, -top, uh, whistle stop tour through some of the work that we're doing. Um, I think that sort of, we've, we've kind of moved on a lot from the way that we've been working in the past. and. Um, what we've learned really is, um, you know, to make things, uh, to really try and get the best visibility um, of Southern research. It really requires, <coughs> sorry, uh, this fourfold approach. Capacity development is still really important, and um, you know, it's what we've done for a very long time. Um, so we work at, you know, individual but also institutional level, um, and adapting to context, but. We need to promote these collaborative mechanisms um, so across the system. Um, so we really do try to bring together the different actors within the system, researchers to publishers, publishers to media, um, and also to, to policy makers. Um, influencing at the international level, I think, is also increasingly important for us. Um, so influencing those in the North who set the agendas so that they're really becoming more inclusive and aware of what's happening in some of the countries where we work. Um, and obviously, everything we do, we do in partnership, um, and we believe that's core to everything in terms of really creating sustainable approaches. And on that note, I'll finish. Thank you.